that at Nazca one has to pay close attention, as Manos and the Great Triangle explained. Every detail must be digested. Bold generalities will get you nowhere. We learn this with a spiral, which upon close examination revealed that it is not. Immediately south of the Great Triangle is the Great Rectangle. It too can be decoded. Not all of Nazca's writings are geometrics. There are fish, monkeys, spiders, birds, like the hummingbird here. And the condor, another bird. Be careful with his wing feathers during the decoding process. Six to the east and only five to the west. Birds. Remember those bird men statues on Easter Island? Enough said for now. Don't want to give you too much to think about at once, or it'll confuse, as do all those lines at Nazca. Better to explain the individual trees and let the rest of the forest take care of itself. The decoding of Nazca's writing, the pyramids, mounds, great earthworks and such, is a rigid discipline and fun for they who have their heads on straight. There are those who try it and can't do it properly, and that's too bad, because unless it's done right, they will never reach the code's higher levels of knowledge. That's where we leave the numbers behind us, work only with pyramids and maps, like the Tiwanaku Akpatak Polar Chinese scenario just presented. And there are even higher levels, beyond even the pyramid grid system, all the way up to hyperdimensionality itself. Care for a peek? Why not? Coming right up. Is there any such thing as pyramid power? That depends upon one's attitude. Positive people versus negative people. Positive people experimenting on their own find that food placed inside a pyramid-shaped container will last for considerable periods. Do the same with a razor blade and its edge will stay sharp. Climb up on top of the Great Pyramid at Giza, open a bottle of spirits, hold it up on top of your head, and sparks will be generated. It's actually been done. Negative people? Napoleon once spent a night inside the Great Pyramid. Whatever it was that happened to him that night, he wouldn't discuss with anyone, nor did he ever go back inside. Then, too, the debunkers who tell us that placing food and razor blades inside pyramid-shaped containers will do nothing for them. Attitude. The real power within pyramids is still beyond human understanding, but it's real and it's boundless. It is likewise feared by the powers that be, for when it is finally understood, the world will be a much better place to live in. But it comes under the title of free energy, and the modern world runs on oil. Accordingly, anything that even hints at free energy is taboo, and we don't want it around because there's no way to meter it to the consumer. But free energy is available, and always has been. Indeed, it actually comes under the heading of universal constants. These powers are not as far beyond reach as we might imagine. We're getting closer to them all the time, and many are involved. Hosts of energies still resonating from the Big Bang itself. 
beyond counting. And they range from the energy needed to grow a tree to that of, well, we're getting tangled up between positive and negative attitudes again, so let me put it another way. To most of us, atom smashing is the epitome of power. There's nothing more potent. But that's a negative concept. The positive attitude knows better, as he or she recognizes the ultimate power to be love. Because that's what the Creator used to spark the Big Bang. The Big Bang. A scientific term which some religions want nothing to do with. Attitudes again. This formula from Einstein says it all, for there can be no reality, indeed no creation, without the combination of energy, mass, and light. So when God gave the order, let there be light, the frequency or vibration of light brought energy and mass together and bang, there it was, the entire universe. Now that utterance from the Creator had to be loud enough to be heard from one end of the universe to the other. Ever hear God yell? It had to have sounded like a big bang. You see, again, it's all a matter of attitude, positive versus negative. Love, then, is the most powerful energy of all. Down here at the human level, even we are aware of love, even though few of us fully understand it. As to the lesser energies, many exist which we are unaware of, even when we look right at them. We will review several in this presentation. One of these natural energies is demonstrated by the planets. Jupiter is the most obvious example with its big red spot. Since it was first observed, it has been perceived as a great storm in the upper atmosphere. Then along came Richard Hoagland and his UN briefing, where he announced that that storm wasn't a storm after all, because it didn't wander about as storms are supposed to. This big red phenomena remains at a given latitude of about 19 and a half degrees. But if it isn't a storm, what is it? Dick advanced the theory that the big red spot is a hyperdimensional signature of some sort. If he's right, then it's one of those energies we can look right at and not recognize. Well, whatever it is, one thing is for certain. It's the signature of some kind of energy. And that was enough to spark my interests. What holds the big red spot at 19.5 degrees of latitude? Dick went on to point out another planetary curiosity over on the planet Mars. Also at 19.5 degrees of latitude is Olympus Mons a five-mile-high inactive volcano. Unlike Jupiter, Mars has no atmosphere and is therefore not as secretive about its surface features. We can see Olympus Mons with our probe cameras. But is its 19.5 degree position only coincidental? The fact that Olympus Mons is inactive doesn't appear to coincide with the active phenomena seen over Jupiter. Then again, Mars is a dead planet. Is it possible that Olympus Mons may have killed it? Mars is a solid planet, while Jupiter is a huge gas bag, incapable of volcano building as we understand it. Yet its big red spot is there for all to see. Conversely, if the Olympus Mons was following some universal mandate, then we do have correlations an atmospheric signature in Jupiter's clouds, an internal energy volcanism on Mars, both at 19.5 degrees. While the composition of the two 